now that we understand some of Basil's core properties, let me try to describe what I think is a useful mental model for how does Basil work at a very high level. So we have to provide something and then we get something in return. What we provide Basil is a description of our code and its dependencies in these files called build files. And it's more configuration than you might have to use for a lot of other tools that are similar. Writing these build files can be largely automated, and we'll go through that in this course. So you don't have to expect to write them all by hand, but they do get checked into version control, and you will sometimes need to read or edit the contents of those files. And in order for those build files to be expressive, we need a rule set to teach it what to do with the descriptions of the code. So we have to go look up, like if we're writing TypeScript code, we go find this something called TS underscore project. If we're writing Java, this Java library. And so there's a little bit of learning how to configure Bazel in these files. Now, what does Bazel do? What's the useful thing that it gives you? Once you've given it this correct description of all of the code, it can infer from those build files a dependency graph. So it constructs just from the fact that you said this library depends on that one, it can find a transitive graph of all of the things that it may need to know in order to do a build. And it doesn't build everything that it can. What Bazel gives you is a lazy transformation from the source tree, all the source files that you've written and checked in, to a folder called Bazel out. And it, requ it contains the outputs that you've asked for. So you will ask Bazel by running commands that we'll look at to produce certain outputs. And it will do that by constructing a minimal amount of work that has to be done to take some of the input files, run them through certain steps, and then produce the outputs you've asked for correctly. Now, tests are also part of this, although it's a, a little bit added after the fact. But Bazel basically treats tests as an exit code of zero or one. That's just another output that it stores in the output tree. And now that output folder, the Bazel out folder, is continually updated as sources are changed. So it tries to redo as little work as possible. Of course, that's uh, what we learned is called incrementality.